Hi everyone. Before we get into what a crash cart is, I've always wondered how it got its name, crash cart. You know, it seems an odd name for a piece of medical equipment. A couple of theories. When defibrillators first came out back in the day, there were these big, heavy monster machines, and people would put them on these little mayo stands. So when you were running, responding to a code in the hospital, and you're running with this thing, it was really, really unstable. Uh, and if you've ever run into a code at some point, you're going, where the heck is this code at? Invariably, you take a corner a little too sharp, the whole thing tips over, you roll down a pavement, and your car explodes. The car crash, crash car. Okay, so crash carts basically come in two flavors, adult and pediatrics. Uh, there are some specialty crash carts too, uh, like for an MRI unit, can't have any metal on it. But for the adult crash cart, let's go through some of its components. At the seat of the head of the table is the defibrillator. Uh, the defibrillator should be manual. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to use an AED on a hospital crash cart, but a full manual defibrillator. It should have a screen big enough so everyone running the code can get a peek at it. Uh, it should be able to do a regular four lead tracing. It should be able to do 12 lead acquisition so we can look for a STEMI. The machine should be able to, or must be able to, defibrillate, provide synchronized cardioversion, and transcutaneous pacing. It should have a printer, so when the cardiologist shows up and goes, what happened, you can go, this happened. Um, additionally, SpO2 monitoring would be outstanding, and capnography would be a wonderful inclusion onto your monitor. Okay, so here's a picture of one of the crash carts in my hospital. And you notice that little round magnet sticking to the side of the crash cart? And you'll see them there, sometimes they're on the refrigerator in your break room. But those magnets are actually used to turn on and off cardiac defibrillators that are implanted. So we can manipulate the function of the device externally with this large magnet. Now the other flavor of crash cart are pediatric crash carts. And many of them are set up to follow the Braslow tape. If you remember, the Braslow tape is a tape you use to measuring the child, and Dr. Braslow figured out a correlation between the height of the child, the length, and the weight. And most uh, medications administered to the pediatric patient are weight-based. So you can take out this tape, you lay it out across your patient, you figure where their color is, and everything needed for that pediatric patient, the size of the tube, the size of the IV, drug dosages, everything is on that particular part of the tape, and it's color-coded. So are the drawers in the crash cart. So if you measure out a kid and the kid is pink, well, then you just go to your pink drawer, you open that up, and everything you need to manage that kid should be in that drawer. So again, a lot of pediatric uh, crash carts are modeled after the Braslow tape. Another thing about crash carts, they have to be checked. You have to check them, and the best thing to do is after you check them, you lock and tag them out, right? This way, we know that drawer was restocked after the code, everything we need is in that drawer, and it's been locked. Now, the lock is plastic, it can come off in an emergency, but it should be checked and locked. Another thing is that all the crash carts in your facility, the whole hospital, should be universal. So the crash cart in the ER is the same as it is in the ICU, on the med surge floor, down in physical therapy. All the crash carts are laid out the same, so there's a consistency. You're used to having drawer one be the airway. Drawer one is the airway for all the crash carts in the hospital. Additionally, the crash cart should have all the medications necessary to manage an emergent cardiac patient. All the list of drugs that we use in ACLS should be in that crash cart. And ideally, what I found is if they're in a separate tray that goes into a drawer, that's even better. This way you don't have loose drugs flying around. And when you're done with the code, you call a pharmacy, they come down, they check the box, make sure everything's there, lock it, seal it, stick it back in the drawer, close it, and you're good to go. I'm Mark. This has been a quick review of what is a crash cart. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.